Honourable Damien O'Connor. Mr Speaker, and for a minister who says a gov this government accepts no failure, I cannot understand how he can sit there and not walk from the benches, because the only mark that that government can get is F for failure. Mr Speaker, this week we had a profound announcement from the National Party. A National Party under John Key that is attempting to deal with the unemployment and housing problem. Well, they had one profound announcement. This is a country under John Key where if you want 40 hours work per week and you want a secure, not you Mr Speaker, any New Zealander wants a secure roof over their head, then the only place you get that is in prison. In prison, under John Key's national government, you get a roof over your head and 40 hours work a week. Mr Speaker, history repeats itself. In 1984, a number of things happened. I have to acknowledge the Honourable Lockwood Smith came into Parliament and the Honourable Robert Muldoon left Parliament. No, not quite. He left office. Mr Speaker, that was a year of crisis. A year of crisis brought about by, we were told, a Prime Minister who was out of control in borrowing money out of control, left this country with huge public debt, Mr Speaker. He borrowed $17.7 billion. Well, 30 years on, in fact it's 29, but it will be 30 in 2014, 30 years on, so far, the national government under John Key has borrowed $50 billion, a record amount. New Zealanders understood the crisis in 1984. Labour, when coming into government in 2014, will be facing the same crisis. It's a crisis of confidence, Mr Speaker, brought about by a government that fails to make the hard decisions, fails to intervene when necessary, and is failing New Zealanders every single day. Mr Speaker, next year, if John Key's allowed to continue, he will have sold off strategic electricity assets. The dollar will remain overvalued because his government refuses to intervene as most other Western countries are doing to protect their exporters, Mr Speaker. Unemployment will continue to be at record levels, Mr Speaker. 20% is a fair calculation of those unemployed and underemployed. Kiwis up and down this country are saying, how come these are the ones with jobs I'm working harder for longer and I'm worse off. Well, John Key's rhetoric and his smarmy smiles don't work anymore. Kiwis are starting to ask, where are we heading? The gap between the rich and poor in this country has grown more than it has ever been before. Why, Mr Speaker? Well, because when John Key's government came into, into power, it cut the taxes for the rich. It put GST up for the poor, Mr Speaker. It increased petrol taxes. It increased school fees, Mr Speaker. Ask a parent about the cost of so-called free education that Mr Burroughs was rabbiting on about. There's no such thing. And no such thing as free health care. We have public health and education systems, but under the national government, they're far from, from free. And the sooner those people on that side of the House, Mr Speaker, and uh, Parliament and Government understand that, the sooner we might have some intervention. Mr, Sk Mr Speaker, John Key's government is failing because a thousand Kiwis every week have lost confidence in the future of this country. Mr Speaker, that is a very, very sad state. Mr Speaker, what has National done in five years? Well, when they came in, they started out by taking off the Auckland Regional Petrol Tax. We heard some ramblings about road funding. Well, the only roads that are getting properly funded are the roads of National Party significance. The roads of National Party significance to the point where we have a Southern Alliance of South Island councils coming together to try and defend their funding acknowledging that their funding has been cut because the national government refuses to top up the eroding funding. The very infrastructure to support rural New Zealanders, the people who are the backbone of this economy still and who were supporters of the National Party, 
That government has slashed funding for that infrastructure. They promise rural broadband. Well, there's a lot of farmers out there still waiting for it. Mr Speaker, if they're concerned really about rural post, they'd put rural broadband in place so the farmers can buy online and then get the parcels delivered, Mr Speaker. There are some simple solutions. We had an increase in GST a real pressure on all rural New Zealanders, on the people creating the wealth from this country, Mr Speaker. We had a Prime Minister who said in his vision for the future that he would like to see a financial services hub in New Zealand to drive a better country and economy. Never mind the speculation that that would have further created a high dollar for exporters. He wanted, and still wants, to have a financial services hub here. Well, there have been a number of reports. In fact, we spent, the government spent half a million dollars to mis giving Mr Craig Stobo money to go and do a report. There's a huge debate between Treasury and Mr Stobo and Mr Key about the value of the financial services hub. But mark my words, Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister is determined, once he's sold SOEs, once he's allowed the partial float of units in Fonterra to get on and create a financial services hub, just like Ireland and just Order. like other countries where we've Order. seen rorts in the system. Sorry to interrupt the member, but the time has come for the dinner adjournment. So I shall resume the chair at 7.30pm.